6.4 Observational Learning Modeling Learning Objectives By the end of this section, you will be able to define observational learning, discuss the steps in the modeling process, and explain the pro-social and anti-social effects of observational learning. Previous sections of this chapter focused on classical and operant conditioning, which are forms of associative learning. In observational learning, we learn by watching others and then imitating or modeling what they do or say. The individuals performing the imitated behavior are called models. Research suggests that this imitative learning involves a specific type of neuron called a mirror neuron. Humans and other animals are capable of observational learning. As you'll see, the phrase, monkey see, monkey do, really is accurate. The same could be said about other animals. For example, in a study of social learning in chimpanzees, researchers gave juice boxes with straws to two groups of captive chimpanzees. The first group dipped the straw into the juice box and then sucked on the small amount of juice at the end of the straw. The second group sucked through the straw directly getting much more juice. When the first group, the dippers, observed the second group, the suckers, what do you think happened? All of the dippers in the first group switched to sucking through the straws directly. By simply observing the other chimps and modeling their behavior, they learned that this was a much more efficient method of getting juice. Imitation is much more obvious in humans, but is imitation really the sincerest form of flattery? Consider Claire's experience with observational learning. Claire's nine-year-old son, Jay, was getting into trouble at school and was def defiant at home. Claire feared that Jay would end up like her brothers, two of whom were in prison. One day, after yet another bad day at school and another negative note from the teacher, Claire, at her wit's end, beat her son with a belt to get him to behave. Later that night, as she put her children to bed, Claire witnessed her four-year-old daughter, Anna, take a belt to her teddy bear and whip it. Claire was horrified, realizing that Anna was imitating her mother. It was then that Claire knew she wanted to discipline her children in a different manner. Like Tolman, whose experiments with rats suggested a cognitive component to learning, Psychologist Albert Bandura's ideas about learning were different from those of strict behaviorists. Bandura and other researchers proposed a brand of behaviorism called social learning theory, which took cognitive processes into account. According to Bandura, pure behaviorism could not explain why learning can take place in the absence of external reinforcement. He felt that internal mental states must also have a role in learning and that observational learning involves much more than imitation. In imitation, a person simply copies what the model does. Observational learning is much more complex. According to Le Francois, there are several ways that observational learning can occur. One, you learn a new response. After watching your coworker get chewed out by your boss for coming in late, you start leaving home 10 minutes earlier so that you won't be late. Two, you choose whether or not to imitate the model depending on what you saw happen to the model. Remember Julian and his father? When learning to surf, Julian might watch how his father pops up successfully on his surfboard and then attempt to do the same thing. On the other hand, Julian might learn not to touch a hot stove after watching his father get burned on a stove. And three, you learn a general rule that you could apply to other situations. Bandura identified three kinds of models, live, verbal, and symbolic. A live model demonstrates a behavior in person, as when Ben stood up on his surfboard so that Julian could see how to do it. A verbal instructional model does not perform the behavior, but instead explains or describes the behavior as when a soccer coach tells his young players to kick the ball with the side of the foot, not with the toe. 
A symbolic model can be a fictional character or real people who demonstrate behaviors in books, movies, television shows, video games, or internet sources. Steps in the modeling process. Of course, we don't learn a behavior simply by observing a model. Bandura described specific steps in the process of modeling that must be followed if learning is to be successful. Attention, retention, reproduction, and motivation. First, you must be focused on what the model is doing. You have to pay attention. Next, you must be able to retain or remember what you observed. This is retention. Then you must be able to perform the behavior that you observed and committed to memory. This is reproduction. Finally, you must have motivation. You need to want to copy the behavior, and whether or not you're motivated depends on what happened to the model. If you saw that the model was reinforced for her behavior, you'll be more motivated to copy her. This is known as vicarious reinforcement. On the other hand, if you observe the model being punished, you would be less motivated to copy her. This is called vicarious punishment. For example, imagine that four-year-old Allison watched her older sister Caitlin playing in her mother's makeup, and then saw Caitlin get a timeout when her mother came in. After their mother left the room, Allison was tempted to play in the makeup, but she didn't want to get a timeout from her mother. What do you think she did? Once you actually demonstrate the new behavior, the reinforcement you receive plays a part in whether or not you'll repeat the behavior. Bandura researched modeling behavior, particularly children's modeling of adults' aggressive and violent behaviors. He conducted an experiment with a five-foot inflatable doll that he called a Bobo doll. In the experiment, children's aggressive behavior was influenced by whether the teacher was punished for her behavior. In one scenario, a teacher acted aggressively with the doll, hitting, throwing, and even punching the doll while a child watched. There were two types of responses by the children to the teacher's behavior. When the teacher was punished for her bad behavior, the children decreased their tendency to act as she had. When the teacher was praised or ignored and not punished for her behavior, the children imitated what she did and even what she said. They punched, kicked, and yelled at the doll. What are the implications of this study? Bandura concluded that we watch and learn and that this learning can have both pro-social and anti-social effects. Pro-social or positive models can be used to encourage socially acceptable behavior. Parents in particular should take note of this finding. If you want your children to read, then read to them. Let them see you reading. Keep books in your home. Talk about your favorite books. If you want your children to be healthy, then let them see you eat right and exercise and spend time engaging in physical fitness activities together. The same holds true for qualities like kindness, courtesy, and honesty. The main idea is that children observe and learn from their parents, even their parents' morals. So be consistent and toss out the old adage, do as I say, not as I do. Because children tend to copy what you do instead of what you say. Besides parents, many public figures, such as Martin Luther King Jr. and Mahatma Gandhi, are viewed as pro-social models who are able to inspire global social change. Can you think of someone who's been a pro-social model in your life? The antisocial effects of observational learning are also worth mentioning. As you saw from the example of Claire at the beginning of this section, her daughter viewed Claire's aggressive behavior and copied it. Research suggests that this may help to explain why abused children often grow up to be abusers themselves. In fact, about 30% of abused children become abusive parents. We tend to do what we know. Abused children who grow up witnessing their parents deal with anger and frustration through violent and aggressive acts often learn to behave in that manner themselves. Sadly, it's a vicious cycle that's very difficult to break. Some studies suggest that violent television shows, movies, and video games may also have antisocial effects, 
although further research needs to be done to understand the correlational and causational aspects of media violence and behavior. Some studies have found a link between viewing violence and aggression seen in children. These findings may not be surprising given that a child graduating from high school has been exposed to around 200,000 violent acts, including murder, robbery, torture, bombings, beatings, and rape through various forms of media. Not only might viewing media violence affect aggressive behavior by teaching people to act that way in real-life situations, but it has also been suggested that repeated exposure to violent acts also desensitizes people to it. Psychologists are working to understand this dynamic.